When coming down the Rand Hill Road, if you look close, you see a sign that says Camp Jericho, and that's where we are heading. We are on what I believe is the Trudeau Road, and we're going to the end of this road for a look at the YMCA camp, Camp Jericho, at the invite of our friend Francis Perrier. So, the Rand Hill Road runs from uh, Altona to Morrisonville, and we are not far from the southern edge of the Altona town line here, southwestern uh, edge, I guess. And we looks like we have arrived for the first time. I am entering Camp Jericho, and it says welcome. So. I'll take that as a good sign. Okay, for many years, Gordy Little did a program with me, and he always talked about his wife, Kay Catherine Little, former Catherine Trudeau, grew up right around here. And this uh, YMCA was, uh, I don't know if it was their property before or part of the Trudeau farm or what, but we're down at the end of the Trudeau Road, and. This fellow insisted that I come here today. What's your name? Francis Perrier, county legislator. Okay, and why did you want me to come here today, Francis? I wanted you to come here to record this if we could. See all the kids up here playing and having a good time. Okay. I hear from a lot of people that they've heard of this place and they've never been here. Basically, the, if I'm wrong, I'll be told. <laughs> but most of the people that come here come to drop their kids off. <laughs> and then they take off, so... And they really don't get to see what it's like. So when they come pick them up, I hope. Pick them up. Okay, they don't kids, just drop the kids, them up. And... Kids run to the car and go home. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. But it looks very well organized from what I see so far. All right. I, this is a YMCA camp, and I don't, I don't see uh, uh, young men here necessarily. I see a lot of young men and women here enjoying we, this. We've, who we've who are we talking to? <laughs> I'm Justin Ein. I'm the CEO of the Plattsburgh YMCA. Okay. Nice to have you guys here today. Yeah, lots have changed over the years, right? Uh, YMCA, no longer young, no longer just men. And, uh, you know, we are certainly for all up here. We are having a great time. Kids are having a good time over there, running through the, the water. And, yeah, we've been up here. We've owned this property since, uh, since the 60s. And it was a farm before that. We actually just found some old uh, farming equipment in the field uh, wow. about a year ago. But we got 180 kids here today. And uh, no, they don't all drive. No. Um, we, we have them bust in. We uh, pick up at the uh, US Oval in Plattsburgh. And um, we've got three or four buses uh, every two weeks that bring the kids up here. And uh, yeah, great counseling staff, a lot of energy, a lot of creativity, and just an absolutely gorgeous uh, setup here. We got kids out in the field over here playing some games. We got some kids over here doing stuff. Um, always, always a good time. Yeah, it, you know, and the weather's great today, but uh, I'm, I assume you have indoor activities if we get a downpour. Absolutely. Or We've got a, a Kiwanis Lodge over here. We've got the Rotary Barn over there. We've got a changing cabin, but this can be used for indoor activities as well. Uh, that, that named after Kevin Colleen? Or? That's right, that's right. That's the Colleen cabin right there. Um, and, uh, and of course, the beautiful pond, and we can kind yeah, of walk and yeah, talk can, if you want. Yeah, I'm going to get to, to the other side of you here, and the camera will bounce a little bit. But uh, um, it's got a name here, Lake Kiwanis. Yeah, Lake Kiwanis. Um, yeah, so this was... Uh, as was just mentioned a few minutes ago, this was this was built. This wasn't uh, a natural pond, um, and uh, they built this. It, it's got to be in the '60s um, when this was uh, taken care of. Um, and again, Kiwanis was a, a big part of making this happen, and uh, as well as building the lodge right next to me over here, um, a true uh, barn raising, if you will. They had the cement donated. They got the wood donated. They got this. They got that. And uh, it's been here for quite a number of years. But we get boating and swimming and fishing and, oh my gosh, it's uh, absolutely gorgeous. Do you have to 
restock the fish? Do, do you know, we haven't had to do a darn thing. Uh, that, that pond is healthy as anything. Is there, and, is there a creek or something that flows into it? Uh, there are some springs around um, the pond that feed into it. And then there's, uh, it's actually a, a dammed system over here. Um, and so there, you know, the overflow does, does wash downstream. Okay, the fish have to get here from somewhere, so. <laughs> well, I imagine they, uh, they, <laughs> you know, it originally. they stocked it originally, and it's <laughs> such a healthy pond that they keep, uh, you know, doing their thing. Okay, so how do the kids uh, get to take part in this? What, uh, what involves becoming a... Uh, uh, active in the YMCA. Yeah, so we've we've run this camp like I said since the 60s um, and it's just grown leaps and bounds over the years. Uh, 180 kids here today. Um, they sign up during uh, springtime around uh, March we start signups pretty early on because we fill up very quickly and have waiting lists and um, and uh, you know depending on our our staffing we're able to I don't know, we could take 250 kids here if we, if we uh, had the staffing. What kind of ratio do you try to get? Uh, 1 to 10, 1 to 12 is, uh, is the max. Um, of course, you have kids that are absent and, you know, take a day off here and there. But, um, you know, all the staff go through an intense uh, week-long training, um, learning about playing games and creativity and, um, and you know how to be good role models. That's really if if all else ends at the end of the day, you know we want them to be good role models for the kids, and uh, and that's a big part of what the why is. Okay, imagine you uh, you take inventory at the big morning when the, when they arrive. You take attendance. <laughs> exactly, exactly. We start and end the day with uh, with an assembly, and there's announcements and some skits, and you know maybe a song or two, and. Yeah, we check the kids in, and then throughout the day, there's um, there's basically three group activities. So they're with their counselors in different parts of the camp. We have archery up here. We have hiking. We have basketball, arts and crafts, a um, whole bunch of games and uh, activities. And they rotate between those activities as a group, learning how to work together, learning some leadership, learning about teamwork. And uh, then they get to choose something that they want to focus on for the week. So they love fishing. They want to do fishing every day. They can go to fishing during that one period. And every day they get to harness that skill. Or maybe it's volleyball or maybe it's, uh, maybe it's archery. So depending on their interests. Um, but it's definitely a, a, a pretty tight community of, of counselors and kids. And they really um, do a great job. So what age group are the, are the kids? Are yeah, graduating kindergarten. Um, I would say up to, I think our oldest camper is uh, 13 years old. Um, usually after 12, um, you know, there's maybe some sports things or some other things that they do during the summer. Um, but then right around 14, 15, we start getting their interest back with um, becoming a counselor in training, or we call them CITs. And then they get to come and spend the summer here and they get to learn about how to be a counselor. And then if they're good and they really keep up with it, we can hire them back after. Okay. So you said hire. So there's obviously an expense here. I see uh, three, seven uh, windmills. Are those, <laughs> are those uh, YMCA windmills? Not, not all of them. We do have five of them. Okay. Um, so there are three and then there's two on the other side here. Um, yeah, those have been up here for a number of years. Um, it's got to be going on 12. 17 years. Yeah, something like that. And yeah. Uh, um, so, yeah, the, we, we do get some residual income from that. But, um, you know, there's, there's a fee to, uh, to a two-week session for a child. The great thing about the Y is that we also have financial assistance. So while a session may be, you know, $350 for two weeks, um, Again, you got to remember that's about eight hours a day, mm -hmm. eight and a half hours a day, five days a week. But we also have financial assistance. So if uh, if you qualify, if a parent needs help or family needs help, we can reduce that um, in half, sometimes three quarters. And uh, you know we don't turn anybody away at the Y. We really want to make sure that we're available to. To, uh, to everyone. Okay, and a parent doesn't have to be a member of the YMCA? You don't have to be. Of course, if you are a member, it's a little bit different fee structure and you get a little bit of a break because you're, uh, cause you're a member of the Y throughout the year. Uh -huh. So uh, after the two weeks are done, 
So we have, have a whole new group that comes it, in there. Typically, right? Okay. So we have, there's nine weeks of summer camp and depending on the school calendar, sometimes there's 10, but nine weeks. So we do two, I'm sorry, we do four two week sessions and then we have a singular fifth week um, that, that, um, that we have kids come up here. And, um, yeah, some kids come for the whole summer. I was going to say, that was going to be my next question. Can they come for more than one session? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, they can, they can sign up for as many as they want. Um, we get a lot of kids that come for the first time. They come for one session and then they want to sign up again because they're having <laughs> such a good time. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of history at this, uh, at this camp. A lot of, uh, a lot of years of building it up. They started out here, I think, with 25 kids and um, and uh, grew that to over 100. And then in the past few years, we've been pushing that because um, we've got about 400 acres of property here. So it's it's a gorgeous, gorgeous setup here. And uh, yeah, we're very happy, very happy. Great leadership, as you uh, as you talked about. Maybe we'll we'll see Stella. Stella is our camp director this year, and just a phenomenal leader. But uh, we've got a great camping staff. They're, they're just just wonderful. So they don't have to take that bus off the Oval. I mean, there's people that don't live around Plattsburgh, people that live in Altona or Champlain or, or Yeah, or exactly. Or so we have families that drop off. We have people coming, you're absolutely right, from all of those places you mentioned. Um, and if they're close enough, they can just drop off here in the morning. Um, before the buses get here, we have a little bit of a line of people waiting <laughs> at, the, uh, at the gate. And uh, they come in, drop the kids off, like you said, and and then the parents are free for a few hours, right? So the hours <laughs> hours are here at camp are what? At 8.30 to 4.30, basically. We have before and after care. So if a family needs to be at work at you know, 7.30, we can, you can we could accommodate that. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, so uh, feeding them? They bring their lunches. Oh, yeah, okay. they bring their lunch and a snack. And uh, yep, throughout the day, there's different times where um, they can take a break, or um, and obviously there's a lunch time as well. Okay. Now you mentioned camping. There's nobody that spends a night here, right? We don't do overnight. Um, we used to do a a singular night for the older kids. We haven't done that in a few years, honestly, since uh, since the COVID years. Uh, we haven't done that, um, but uh, we'll probably bring that back as a kind of a special thing. There's nothing like sleeping out under the stars and sitting by a campfire and telling stories and, Especially when you know. Mosquitoes. <laughs> <laughs> you were doing okay today, right? There's yeah. not too many of them out. There we're, hasn't we're, been a lot of them this year anyway. Yeah, so yeah, no, it's, yeah. It's, a great, uh, it's a great spot. Yeah. What do you say, you wanna walk around a little bit? Yeah, and uh, you know, you talked about singing. Do you let them sing? Hello, mother. Hello, father. <laughs> I think if we started singing that, they wouldn't know what the heck we were talking about. Well, once they get into the words, they might. <laughs> yeah, no, there's uh, there's so many different songs and games and, and cheers and all sorts of stuff that, uh, yeah, the kids like to like to do. So the groups, are you break them up according there to she age is. as much Stella. as possible? Oh. <laughs> She's the Hi Stella. She's the bathroom person. She huh? is the camp director. This lady is a a rock star. Um, started with us this year, but has worked at the Y throughout the year. And um, sorry to put you on the spot, but we're just we're taking a walk around and uh, and showing these fine gentlemen what uh, Camp Jericho's are all about. Okay, and we got to point out she has been monitoring this restroom we didn't catch her coming out of the bathroom here all right all right, all right. <laughs> she, she's been doing her her duties here she's checking been, on kids so. oh that's what she's been absolutely so we're not embarrassing her no coming no out of the, no but the more we stay order. here the more we are so we're gonna we're gonna walk this way we'll catch up with you all in right just a sounds good thank you. thank you okay i don't want to zoom in on any kids because you know don't know what parents is going to say are going to yep. say uh I don't oh, want my I mean, kid on that. Yeah, nice I can. Yeah, I can here. do a pan there's, there's panorama here. We've got another field um, and archery down on the on the north end of camp there. Um, but you know, we're really all about um, small group activities. Right now, we've got a couple of groups that are kind of connected and playing together. Um, but we really want you know the the counselor group to kind of connect. And uh, uh, there's one of our fine counselors right there. How you doing, buddy? Nice to see ya. All right, having a little, uh, a little cold treat. Yeah. 
games going on over here, playground over that way. Yeah, and playground and and uh, and uh, basketball and uh, yeah, having a good old time. Having a good old time. So did you want to walk um, down this way a little bit, or well, are you good here? I think we can see what's okay. there without the. Okay. I don't. You know, again, uh, you never know with with kids uh, who doesn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This uh, is who true. Who doesn't want their kid on recorded? So I think we're far enough away we can see there's kids out there without. <laughs> But they're Not having being a good able time to identify today. them. Yeah. So how do how do they sign up? Do they have to go to the YMCA website, Facebook page? Yeah. Or? You know, this year we did a whole online uh, sign up piece, and it worked like a charm. Uh, we will probably continue doing that, uh, but we'll send out um, information through our Facebook page and our website around um, you know when sign ups begin. Yeah, they do have everything online, so they sign up, they get their kids uh, all their health records and information and all the things needed. It's a pretty simple uh, process. Um, doesn't take too much time. Okay, do you use uh, this property at all when it's not summer? Yeah, we have a couple of groups that come up throughout the year. Not as much as we want to. This is certainly something that we are looking at as a staff team. How we can get um, other activities, at least for the shoulder seasons. And then for winter time, we've had people come up here and do snowshoeing and, you know, those kind of things. So well, it's a long ride here. That's probably not plowed. <laughs> it is not plowed. So that's part of the <laughs> snowshoeing. They got to walk in here. Well, you got to park um, the road. And... Yeah, we've been uh, we've been focusing on our on our larger project down in in Plattsburgh, and um, this is on our master plan to. Um, uh, to do a lot more up here. We've, we've invested quite a bit of money and, and capital and volunteers into this uh, facility. Uh, the next big project here is a new, uh, a new bathhouse. Um, our, our bathhouses are a bit dated and, and need, some, uh, need an overhaul. So. Well, just mowing all the property here is a, an all day task. We have a great group, uh, Brian Hartman and John Prim, uh, they've been coming up for the last few years and helping us uh, mowing and um, yeah, they, they help us keep the property going. Are they Kiwanis people? No, uh, no they're just no. volunteers. Brian Hartman works for the United Way and John Prim is a Rotarian with me and, um, and uh, uh, wanted to help. So they come up and uh, I think it's because we got a new zero turn lawnmower. Oh, so he kind of has a little too much fun on that thing, right? <laughs> but uh, no, they're they're great great folks and good help. And uh, but we have uh, Kiwanis come up, we have Rotary come up. There's always uh, there's always something to do. So if there's folks out there looking for volunteer opportunities, we certainly have uh, have a few things that we can get going on. Okay, and uh, most of your. Uh, staff here, your youth that are staff members, they've probably been through this program as as kids, right? Yeah, well, we have a handful. We've got um, a lot of new staff this year, um, which is great, you know, some new energy, new creativity, um, but we do have a few that were campers here, and, and that's a really beauty of this, is the kids grow up and they see the fun that, that's had, and, and they want to be a part of it, so they... Um, they come back and they want to be uh, so, so want nice. to be a counselor. Yeah, it's a nice summertime job. You, you, absolutely, you, you absolutely. Get to throw a ball around while while you're treat, showing the kids how to do it. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Well, we've got a great great group of uh, of staff up here this year. Very proud. Okay, Francis, you got some more questions here? Ah, oh, not right offhand. Not offhand. All right. All right. Uh, yeah. I see stairs like this in the Hallmark movies in barns, but uh, Francis, I don't remember having any stairs like that in any of my barns. Either. No, we didn't either. Oh, so this might be a Hallmark movie here, but... What we had was ladders like that. <laughs> yes. That's right. That's, That's right. what we had. Yeah, no, this is a, certainly an old barn. This is one of the original buildings, and this goes prior... Oops, sorry. This goes prior to when we took over. Um, and because uh, this was a farm um, back in the day and, and this was a hay barn yeah. and uh, yeah exactly um, uh, you know but we keep it in good shape it does need some work we're going to try to do some uh, work on the outside of the building uh, roof is in is in good shape but um, now you say we 
You gonna grab a hammer here, Justin? Oh, I'll definitely grab a hammer. Oh, yeah. yeah, I love that kind uh, of we stuff. We might come back to yeah, witness that, <laughs> just to verify. And we'll, we won't announce when we're coming. Though. Exa no, you, no. You, you think you'll hold a nail for me so I can hit it? <laughs> oh no, I'm not falling for that one. Yeah, it's uh, we do a lot of stuff with the YMCA with volunteers. So people want to come and, and help out. Um, if they want to pick up a paintbrush, they want to pick up a nail or a hammer. Um, there's always some work to be done. And uh, it's through the work of the volunteers that we're able to do all the things that we do, whether it's fundraising, whether it's, you know, putting up a barn or putting up a building. Now that uh, little uh, metal thing at the very peak there, that was probably for the hay hooks. Yeah. Yeah. Right, and then they would—they were able to slide it yeah. along to be able to pull it up in the hay barn. Back before people were using baled hay. That's right. They'd come with a, a load of hay, and they'd uh, do a hook there and hook it up and pull it up. And that's right. Uh, they usually have a team of horses or a horse on the other side of the, that wall. Oh, to pull the rope. They'd pull the rope, and I was about four years old. My job was to say whoa, because the guy in the barn was. Say whoa, and I'd holler to the guy in the okay. horse. Whoa! Gotcha. So gotcha. That, was, that was an important job. That was an important. How old were you then? About four or five. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. That's you know that's wonderful. Get you right out there working on the farm. But well, that was before you were, you got bales all your life, right, Francis? No, we had the uh, we had the hay. The hay. hay. Yeah, we had that barn floor drive in on a load of loose hay, like you said. Drop, drop the fork, grab it, pull it up, bring it to wherever in the barn you wanted it, dump it. Yeah, yeah that was done. You know, you look at all the work that in the 1800s that those people put in to yeah. clear this land, you know. Yeah. Now you get a stump that you want to get rid of, it's, it's a monstrous job. <laughs> they went through and cleared dozens and hundreds right. of acres of Right, of without open. Uh, machinery, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, pretty, uh, pretty amazing. Yeah, the effort they did is just amazing. I was thinking last night of uh, how they used to spread the manure. My father had this uh, wagon that he put behind the horses, and they would take, you know, put, dump the uh, manure in there out of the barn, and he'd put that team of horses out there and go and throw it out one pitchfork at a time yeah. in the middle of the winter out on the on the yeah. land. You know? wow. Yeah, the, the work that you know people did to get to where we are today is. I completely agree. I think that's something we've got to continue to teach our, our kids about is hard work, and you know it's not just about the quick uh, the quick buck, you know. Yeah, that's why I always try to support Country Dreams Farm and the Babby Rural Museum, and okay. that's in Peru and the Country yeah, Dreams wonderful. Farm and Pelerin Road because they're trying to show that to, to let people know what life was like. Okay. Yeah. How do you feel when you go to Bobby Farm and you look at that and you go, I use most of that equipment. <laughs> That's the way I feel. You feel kind of old, do you? Yeah. <laughs> that was brand new when I was a kid. <laughs> well, let's take a walk out here. I can show you the, uh, the farm there. Okay, we're not quite sure when this pond was put in, but it was sometime during Francis Perrier's lifetime. Yeah, late 60s. Late 60s. And... Uh, Okay, as we said, it was put in here in the in the late '60s. Uh, yeah, Kiwanis, uh, Kiwanis built this. Um, they they've been involved in the camp quite a bit, and uh, um, built the lodge behind us here. Um, helped us pay for the the new docks down there with the boats. And uh, the beauty about this pond is is that it's so much bigger than what you're seeing right now. There's two out, um, kind of coves, one to the left and one to the right, and that expands uh, quite a bit more. It's a good mile and a half around the pond, almost oh, wow. two miles, um, and just gorgeous. There's some uh, beaver huts out there, um, although their beavers are tearing up a bunch of our trees, yeah, but yeah. you know, what are you gonna do? Um, but yeah, I don't see the geese out here, but the geese come here every year and uh it's just gorgeous so we've got a couple of lean-tos out there so those are good spots where kids can um, with their staff with their counselors go hike out play some activities out there and then and then come on back to camp uh, how about like uh we haven't been over uh inundated with it this year 
I know last year, uh, around July 2nd, we got a, a whole ton of water in this area. A whole ton of and water. A week later, uh, Vermont got it and they got flooded out. Yep. So does your pond rise a little bit once in a while? It does, yeah. Actually, in the middle of the pond, you can't see it now, but there's a really small island. Uh, there's actually, you could maybe see just the yeah, crest of it coming, coming up. But uh, yeah, that uh, means because you know the pond has been rising, and our beavers have been plugging up our our drainage, <laughs> right? So we've got we've got a dam system there with a nice culvert, and water gets too high, and it and it drains out. Okay, he but, meant he meant to say darn system. There. Darn system. <laughs> yeah, Sorry about yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a technical beaver. term. Hold on. <laughs> uh, yeah. So so uh, you know it helps it keep it. Uh, not from getting too out of control. But yeah, we get some of those storms and you know, it'll it'll raise a couple inches. Have you had much algae algae problem? Or no. It looks, it looks nice and clean. No, yeah. it's it's a great pond. It's uh well, if it's got springs feeding it, that helps. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and this is the safe swimming area for the kids right here. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah we have a, a waterfront director and lifeguards and all the kids are swim tested so we can ensure that you know they can go either in the deep end or if they can't swim too well then they stay in the shallow end and be me shallow end yeah, is that right yeah. okay that's why they call me shallow, shallow. <laughs> now you know why well, i know why okay i'll pass that on <laughs> okay thank you justin we'll find another spot to point the camera all right Okay, I think we, <laughs> despite the screams you hear, I think we've seen some kids having a good time. Yeah, that's we have. <laughs> well, I want to thank you for inviting uh, me here, Francis, and uh, uh, I'm sure if people want to know more about this uh, YMCA camp, Camp Jericho, they should go to the Plattsburgh YMCA Facebook page or, in, or website and, and find out more. Yeah, okay. again, that's a very nice place. Just look for the the uh, windmill and just follow just follow the windmill there was, no, there was no Trudeau Road sign out there was there I didn't see one but there's a big wide camp sign <laughs> yeah so yeah, I didn't see the Trudeau Road sign but uh, it, it is on the map as a Trudeau Road and they spell it wrong different than my mother spelled, spelled yeah. it my, my grandfather came from Napierville in the early 1900s and they were EAU but uh, in the research I've done, all the Trudeaus came from a guy named Etienne Trudeau with a T, who came here and uh, begat a whole lot of Trudeaus. And yeah. some spell it with an O now, and a lot of them still spell it, like uh, Cousin Justin and Cousin Pierre. Pierre was my grandfather's eighth cousin. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Well, anyways, we had a very nice tour from yep. Justin. He was told us a lot of information we didn't know that we can share with others and all in all it was a great a great morning yeah it's always uh, easy to say things that i don't know so and seeing all those little kids having a good time <laughs> having a good time that's right every one of them yep okay thank you francis Perrier.